Going Linux screencast number 7. Partitioning a hard drive using gparted. Welcome to this Going Linux screencast. I'm your host Larry Bushy. And I'm your co-host Bill. In this screencast we will be covering how to partition a hard drive using the gparted partition editor. This Going Linux screencast is one in a series of screencasts produced by the Going Linux team as part of the Going Linux podcast. For this episode, we used an HP G60 notebook computer running Peppermint 4 Linux and a Toshiba 7200 RPM 100 gigabyte SATA drive, an Apricorn SATA to USB adapter, and GParted version 0.16.1 partition editing software. GParted is a partition editor that allows you to graphically manage your hard disk partitions without data loss. Gparted allows you to shrink your C, SGA1, HGA1, or any other hard drive. It allows you to create space for any new operating system, and it can also be used to rescue data from lost partitions. You can obtain the Gparted partition editor at gparted.org. In our episode 227, we did an introduction to dual booting, mm -hmm. and in that episode, we covered a number of different introductory type things, introducing what dual booting is, why it's important to you, and why you might want to do it in the first place. Larry, setting up a dual boot computer doesn't have to be difficult. <laughs> That's right. You just <laughs> insert the DVD, choose the right option, and let it run. So it seems like we've covered the basics. What's left to discuss? Well, some people might feel that they want to maybe control the amount of space their new Linux takes up on their hard drive, or install Linux onto its own hard drive, or maybe just have more than one other OS on their computer. In other words, have it multi-boot. We talked a little bit about that in our introductory episode. So they might want or have to partition manually. So we're going to take a look at how to do that. Oh, okay. Well, while we were looking for, uh, and doing research for this uh, episode, we ran across several tools that are available. Yep. These tools are very, very good. And um, using a live DVD or a live USB stick uh, with a partition editor on it is an excellent uh, a uh, tool to have uh, if you are managing computers or setting up computers for people. If you're a computer tech at all, this is one of the kind of tools that you want to have available to you. And, you know, whether you run it on Windows, Mac, or Linux as your base operating system, having it on, on a live DVD or a USB stick is just an invaluable tool to have. Okay, so let's just pick one of these graphical tools and let's kind of walk through it. Okay. So Bill, what we have in our setup today is Peppermint 4 and we have plugged into Peppermint 4 a 100 gigabyte external drive that we're going to be using to partition and you can see on this external drive we have uh, Windows already pre-installed and you can tell it's Windows because it's got documents and settings and i386 folder and a my documents folder and a bunch and a quarantine of quarantine file yes and a bunch <laughs> of other stuff on here that's kind of weird looking to people who have used Linux forever but that's the drive we're going to partition all right and one of the things that makes partitioning a hard drive so confusing to people and why most people will just let the Linux installer partition the drive however they feel is because there are so many choices, as with many things Linux, there are so many choices as to how to partition 
your drive. So we actually have in the show notes a link to an article that is on how to geek. In that how to geek article is how to choose a partition scheme for your Linux PC. And they're using examples from Ubuntu there, of course. And what we're talking about here will apply to uh, using GParted as your uh, partitioning tool of choice. So some of the qu those questions that people have are things like, I've got no idea how to do this. And I've heard that you can have a home partition and a swap partition and a boot partition and a root partition and some other partitions. What do I need? What size should they be? How many do I need? Do I need them all? You know, those kinds of questions. And we hope yeah. to be able to answer those questions here today. All right. Okay. So first thing you need to do is if your Linux distribution doesn't already have Gparted installed, or some other partitioning tool like KDE Partition Manager or Qt Parted or Disk Druid or Disk Drake or even Parted Magic if you want to use that. Uh, you need to go to the repositories or the software center or software manager uh, and install it. So if I put in my password here for the software manager uh, and again, this is Peppermint OS, mm. uh, and so they're using the Mint software manager here. And I just search for Gparted, or you could also search for partition managers if you wish. And you see I've already got it installed, as indicated by the little green check mark here. But if you wanted to install it from here, this button in... If you wanted to install it from here and you didn't have it installed, this button would say install. You would click this little progress bar would go across here. And once you've got it installed, you can begin using it. No, Looks like it's got some pretty positive reviews. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And in uh, Debian-based systems, it will usually show up under System Tools menu or something like that. Here it is right here, Gparted. And, Bill, tell us why it's asking us for this password here when I run this. Uh, well, because we're getting ready to make changes to the system. Yeah, exactly. So whenever uh, you make system changes in Linux, you are required to put in your password to confirm that you are you, that you have access to this computer, and you have permissions to actually make this change. So the first, Very important. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I said that this system had uh, Windows installed in it. EXT4 is a Linux file system. Why is this showing up as EXT4, Bill? Two different hard drives. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we've got the um, Windows drive hooked up to this computer by way of USB. So ah, this okay. is my default hard drive that I actually have uh, Linux installed. So Peppermint OS is installed on the SDA drive, and you can see it's a okay. 500 gigabyte drive. Uh, now, if I switch over to SDC, I probably had another USB drive plugged in at one point, probably my yeah. flash drive that picked up B. So now it's SDC. And I can tell okay. the difference between the two, not only in the letter, but also in the size. And if you recall, I said it was a 100 gigabyte drive. So here we are. This looks a little more like what it should. So we've got an NTFS drive, which is the Windows file format. Mm -hmm. And uh, here it is here mounted at this point. And I can see that it has 34 gigabytes of used space. So Windows is taking up uh, less than half of the space. And we've got about 60 mm -hmm. gigabytes left. Now, should I use all 60 gigabytes for Linux, Bill? Well, the correct answer would be let's get rid of Windows entirely. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to, uh, you can uh, partition it. It's depending on what you want to do. Right. So um, my thought here is if you want to continue to use Windows, you're probably going to want to leave a little free space in order to continue to be able to save data to your Windows partition or install additional programs to your Windows. And updates. 
and updates. Yes, updates take a lot of space sometimes as well. So you do want to leave some free space for Windows to be able to operate if you want to continue to use Windows. So we probably can use half of this hard drive. We can probably use 50 gigabytes, but let's just give Windows a little more room because it's a bit of a hog in space. And let's just say we're going to use about 30 gigabytes of space. Does that sound about right? Oh, that's kind of, kind of close, but okay. I mean, for this practice, I, I find that you probably want to yeah, add uh, of at least 10 gig more gigabytes on to anything. So if you think you're 30, go 40. <laughs> but that's because Windows uh, is kind of a big pig when it comes to programs, and it likes to have uh, duplicate files. And, you know, I've seen a, a, a two um, gigabyte update from uh, Microsoft. So it's just more the merrier. So what you're saying, Bill, is right now Windows is using about 35 gigabytes of space. We should probably add another 10 to that and allow it to use 40 gigabytes of space for Windows and the remaining space for Linux. That's what uh, I would recommend. Okay. So if I say let's give it 50 and let's give uh, Linux 50, that adds a little more safety margin. So let's actually use yeah, actually. half the space. Okay. Okay. All right. So one of the things that you need to realize when you're first using the partitioner is that in order to resize the partition, you must have the hard drive that you're using, the partition that you're using, unmounted. And you can see from the display that we have the NTFS partition mounted here. So we first thing we want to do is unmount it. So in the partition editor, you can select from the graphical display, or you can select from the list of partitions. Either one does yeah. the same thing. And then under here, uh, you'll see the menu says partition, and there's a selection for unmount. If this were already unmounted, that selection wouldn't be there. Step number one is make sure you're using the right drive. <laughs> And step That's number important. step number two is to unmount that partition. And the reason you want to unmount the uh, partition is you can't work on the, the, the drive until you unmount it. Right. Because it's being used. That's exactly right. So you want to unmount that partition. And that's one of the reasons why you can't dynamically uh, change the partition size on the drive that we're using on SDA because mm -hmm. we're using it for Linux. Now, if we had uh, a different uh, f volume manager installed, like LVM, uh, which I think is what OpenSUSE uses by default, uh, you can do partition size changes live. Probably not a wise move, but you can. Well, uh, OpenSUSE and Fedora seem to be leaning toward the LVMs. Right. Yeah. But unless you have that in your in your standard installation of just about every other Linux distribution, uh, you're going to want to unmount the drive before you start partitioning. Yes. yes. Okay. So we have a separate drive. We have unmounted it, and we're going to use about 50 gigabytes of it for uh, Windows and the remaining 50 gigabytes for Linux. So right yes. now, uh, about all of the hard drive space is taken up with Windows. And we can tell it's Windows because it's formatted NTFS. Uh, so now, what's our first step here, Bill? So far, we've made sure we had the right drive. Yep. We've unmounted the, uh, the drive so we can actually work on it. Yep. Now, we need to set up the new partitions. Right. So first step is to make the Windows partition smaller. So let's do that. Okay. So we'll go to, we, we first select the partition we want to make smaller, go to the partition menu, and select Resize. So, okay, so now it says free space preceding, new size, free space following, align to, let's make this easy. The easiest way to, to do this is you can just grab and manually adjust it. Right, so I go to the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. And I drag this until it's smaller. And you can see we can drag it bigger, smaller. smaller. And I said I want to make it about equal. 
So we'll make it uh, 40. Eh, let's make Windows a little bit smaller than yeah. Linux. There we go. Linux needs to more space. Yeah, because I'm going to be using yeah. Linux a lot more than Windows. So yeah. in the 95 megabits, 95 gigabits rather, of space that is available on this partition, we've got about 47 for Windows now. And we've got 48 for Linux. That seems fair. Yeah. We're number one. We're yeah. number one. Okay. Yeah. So now um, I will click the button that says resize slash move. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it looks like I've got two sections, the Windows section yep. and an unallocated space over here on the right. But you don't yet. So tell us about that. Well, right now it's what we call proposed changes. So you see there's a little um, arrow that uh, right here says, uh, yeah, it says apply all operations. Yep. And when you click that, then it will actually make the changes to your drive. So this is basically you propose the changes, you make sure everything's set right, make sure that you're on the right drive because, you know, I've actually formatted the wrong drive before. <laughs> uh, yeah, multiple times. And uh, so once you make sure everything's the way you want it, then you hit click apply all operations and then it writes the uh, the new uh, partitions to the drive. Right. Okay. So, uh, and it's going to keep track of what our process is down here uh, on the bottom. And you can see we've got one change, one proposed change. And it says right here on the bottom, operation pending, which is good because yep. we haven't committed anything yet. So there's an undo button here which allows you to undo that last operation if you want to. So uh, if you make a mistake as you go along, you can actually go back uh, until yeah. you press the button that says apply all operations. Then yeah. all bets are off. Yeah. So you make sure that you, uh, you know, there's no rush. So take your time. This is, it's not hard. It's just, you just got to make sure that you have everything set right. You know, you've got the right drive. You've got how much space you want. You know, take your time and it's pretty much foolproof. Right. Now, uh, what we want to partition is this unallocated space here. We've got 47 gigabytes of space that we want to allow Linux to be installed into. And with the Mint installer or the Ubuntu installer, if you let it go ahead and, and do its own partitioning without manually partitioning it, it will create a boot partition and it will create a swap partition. And all of your home folder information will be in the same partition as the Linux installation itself. And one of the reasons many people will want to do manual partitioning is they want to have their home partition or the files in their home folder in its own partition. So uh, let's take that approach. There is another uh, reason that you want to do a, a manual partition uh, over an automated is, uh, for example, I like to choose what type of file system mm -hmm. I use. Right. So, you know, so when you're doing the manual, you can actually have complete control over what type of file system that you want to write. Right, exactly. So let's just do that. So let's take it relatively simple. We'll have a boot partition where we will install Linux, the operating system and the uh, operating files, if you will. We'll have a separate home partition so that the documents that you create will go into that partition and we'll create a swap partition. The minimum you need is a boot partition. You don't have to have a swap partition, but it is recommended that you have a swap partition, depending on how much RAM you have and whether or not you have an SSD drive as opposed to a spinning hard drive. Uh, drive space is cheap. It is. And so the reason for the swap partition is if you're used to Windows, this is what they call the paging file in Windows. Uh, and that's where information that's stored in RAM that's not going to be used immediately. Uh, and if you're running out of RAM to store stuff in as you're using the operating system, um, it will put some of that information that's in RAM onto the hard drive temporarily, kind of swap it out of RAM 
uh, to make more room in RAM for the things you're actually doing. And then it will recall it back from the hard drive and put it back in RAM if you actually need that. So that's what the swap partition is and does. We recommend that you have at least a root partition and a swap partition, but we're going to add a third one, a home partition as well. So how do we do this, Bill? I selected the open space here. I just clicked on it. What's next? Okay. Once we've uh, got the space uh, so we can add our partition to it, just going to select new. Okay, so we've right clicked on that space and mm. we'll select new. Okay. Yep. Okay. And you're going to come up and it's going to say on the title bar, create new partition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one we said we needed was the root. Yes. Okay, so. Um, how much do you like to uh, make your root partitions, Larry? How big do you usually write them? Well, let's think about this. So Linux, depending on which distribution of Linux you choose, uh, you may be minimum four gigabytes of space used up by, by Linux. I've seen as little as three and as much as six. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking if you kind of double that, you're going to look at maybe 10 or 12 gigabytes of space for the Linux installation itself for the root partition. Does that sound about right? Well, I usually, um, I like even numbers. Mm -hmm. So I usually just uh, put it to 20, plenty of room to grow. It just seems to work. Okay. So in our case here, we have about uh, 50 gigabytes of space. If we make it down to about 20, that's a little less than half the space for Linux itself, right? But that's, you know, but since we're using a smaller, um, you know, we broke up a small drive, mm -hmm. we can get away with, uh, I would say, 10 to 12. If this was a, you know, a big drive and we, and we had plenty of space, I would say go ahead and 20. But since we want to keep as much space for our program and stuff, let's go ahead and make it 12. Okay, so we'll make it 12. So if you want it exactly 12, you can type into the little field here, but I'm just yeah. using the graphical thing. Okay, so what we'll have is our root partition here, and what determines whether it's root or not is first we have to make it a primary partition, Yep. and then we choose the file format. So we've and got lots of choices here. You, you want to, um, until you know what the... Uh... The, each one of them does and the benefits, you can't go wrong with EXT4. Okay, so let's choose that one. That's yeah. the one that Debian distributions choose by default. And I think uh, for some of the other RPM-based distributions, they may choose that as well. They may choose uh, Riser or something else, uh, but they're not going to be choosing NTFS, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And before we go any farther, there's if you look uh, in the box, there's a little... Uh, empty box that says label. Oh, okay, right here. Yep. What you want to do is you want to put slash and then root. And then you're going to click add. Okay. Okay. So now you're looking at um, the results of, of your making your first partition. And you'll see that it says uh, ext4 mm -hmm. and where we it actually shows that it's the root. Uh, the label actually shows up, and that's basically there, so you know what each one is and stuff. It just kind of helps. Yeah. Now, you notice that we still have some um, unallocated space. Right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, click on it and create create new again. Mm hmm And we're going to go ahead and create our swap now. Okay. And so, Larry, how much RAM does this, this uh, laptop have? Uh, I don't remember, so let's go find out. I think it has four gigabytes. Uh, let's uh, go to, where do we go here? Um, uh, oh, wait, system tools. Here we go. Yeah. Task yeah. manager. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And we have about three gigabytes of space. As a general rule of thumb, I like to take what RAM we have and double it and say, so if we have three, I would like to have six in swap. Okay. So now, uh, if I drag from the left, it's mm -hmm. going to put the swap space next to the root partition. 
If, on the other hand, I select the handle on the left and move it to the right, it's going to make a space over on the right, leaving space between root and the swap. Is there a preference or does it matter? There's people that say it uh, it makes a difference. Other people say it doesn't make a difference. Uh, there's really not a definitive answer. Whatever way you want to do, do it, as long as you have a swap. Okay. So let me put the swap partition right at the far end. And the reason I want to do that is because I may add more RAM to this computer later, and I may want mm -hmm. to change the swap partition size, and I just find it a little easier to do it if it's on the end of the drive, if you will. So the size that I'm looking for is six. So let's see, new size, six gigabytes is about there, there, close enough. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to pick a primary partition. Okay. It'll be a primary, not an extended partition. Yeah. And then you're going to pick Linux swap. It tells the computer that it, that's a swap space. Right. Now, you don't have to, but since we were labeling, uh, just go ahead in the label box, put slash swap. It's, it doesn't hurt to have labels. Now, click add. There we okay. go. Okay. Now, we've got our root. We've got our swap. And sitting right in the middle is basically 29 gigabytes of free space mm -hmm. and this is real easy to do okay what you're going to do is you're going to highlight it mm -hmm. right click it new and change the file system to ext4 do we want an extended partition or no 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 okay so we'll leave it as a primary partition ext4 for storing our data and and down to label label as home okay and Hit add. That's it. That's it. We're done. We're done. Okay. Actually, we're not done, are we? No, <laughs> no, we're not. But we're done setting up the partitions. Right. And okay. One one thing that you can see is that it's done the different file formats in different colors, so you can quickly and easily see visually that. Uh, the root partition and the home partition are going to be ext4. The Windows partition, of course, is NTFS. And the swap partition is the Linux swap file system format. And and you see, as you're looking at uh, Gparted, that everything's labeled. So you see where the root is. You see where the home is. You see where the swap is. You see where the NTFS is. Things are color-coded. So now you can visualize how everything looks and you can make sure that it's set correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Larry, there's a button that you gotta hit to make these changes. And that would be this one here, it apply fly. all operations. Okay, are you sure? Editing partitions has potential <laughs> to cause loss of data. You're advised to back up your data before proceeding. And if you haven't backed up at this point, Cancel all this and do your backup because we are messing with the infrastructure of this hard drive. And if you don't have a backup of at least your data, you risk losing it at this point. So And you can't it. blame me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we we accept no responsibility if you lose pictures of your wife, child, or dogs. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hit apply at this point. So there we go. And now it gives us a little progress bar. Mm -hmm. If you want to see the details of what it's doing step by step, you can expand that little section and you can watch it go through each of the different things that you asked it to do. Uh, if that's not of interest to you, you can, you can leave it collapsed and just watch the progress. Sometimes, depending on the drive size, it'll take uh, uh, a few minutes. That's a good time to go... Uh, get a cup of coffee, get a drink, go to the bathroom, whatever, and then come back. Yep. So we'll just let this run, and we'll be back in just a few minutes to see the final results of our partitioning efforts. Yay. So uh, now that we're finished with the partitioning, you can see that we have four partitions. We have the original NTFS partition for the windows and you can see there's a little bit of extra space there for us to be able to continue to use windows 
We have the primary partition on our hard drive, which is the partition for our root. And then we have another primary partition on the far right hand side, if you're looking at it on the screen right now. Uh, that is our uh, Linux swap so that we can allow information to RAM to swap into this on the hard drive. And finally, our separate home partition where all of our data that we create while using Linux will be stored. Yeah, you said it's been a long time since you've had a separate home partition. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I do that is that say that you want to do a, a fresh install of Mint, say your Mint is causing problems, you can write the changes to the system files and, and not touch the home and everything will still be there. All your settings and permissions and all that stuff. So I know some people that they've, they will change whole distributions. You know, they'll have like uh, Ubuntu and they'll go to Debian. Well, they'll leave their home partition alone and they still have all their files and stuff. Now there are some little niggly things that, you know, you have to clean up, you know, different uh you know you get a little crazy settings and stuff but nothing you can't fix right. so and it also makes it easier if if you're going to be uh, doing as many uh reviews of different distributions uh i always make sure i have a good uh backup copy of my home partition right yeah and it's a little more applicable if you're upgrading the existing um distribution you're using to the next version and you want to do a fresh install, but you don't want to have to uh, mess with your home directory and reinstalling applications and then copying over from your backup the, the, uh, the, the profile settings and so on. That way, if you're actually changing uh, from one distribution to another, especially if the distribution has a different philosophy on where third-party software is to be installed, you will have things that will break um, and you'll have to reset where the permissions are pointing onto your, your home partition. But uh, it's a nice way to be able to not have to um, restore from backup your home partition after you do a, a fresh install of, of uh, one distribution to the next version of that distribution as opposed to upgrade. So if your distribution doesn't provide an upgrade path, you may want to do that. Uh, or if in the case of Mint, where they do provide an upgrade path, but if you're like me, you're not sure that that's all that reliable yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I always do a fresh install and having all your home settings in a separate partition can save you some time. You just install to the root partition and then point to the uh, home as your, um, as your home folder. You'll find out as, uh, you do uh, more of these uh, setting up your different partitions and stuff that Linux is very flexible to your needs. You'll have more choices on how to do things than you ever have with OS X or Windows. And it's not just, it's not a bad thing. It's just the way things are. So you can really make it your own. You can tell it right down to, you know, where you want things stored, you know, so... That's, that's why you you truly know how to fix your computer. And if you can do this, you're on your way to uh, understanding how things work. Yep, exactly. This concludes our Going Linux screencast. Thanks for watching. Music provided by Mark Blasco at podcastthemes.com.